All right, guys, welcome to AWS Simplified, the place where I teach you everything there is to know about AWS. Now, today we're going to be talking about DynamoDB streams, and we're going to be doing an overview. So, let's get into it. So, firstly, let's answer what is a DynamoDB stream. So a DynamoDB stream is a feature that emits events when record modifications occur on your DynamoDB table. So what this basically means in layman's terms is that anytime something happens to your table, if there's some kind of modification on the underlying data records, an event is going to be fired that kind of captures the change that took place on your table. So there's three types of events. Uh, and there's an insert, an update, and remove. And logically, if you think about this, you're either adding data, changing data, or deleting data. So these are the three types of events that are offered through the streams. Now, the, the powerful part about this is that events can carry the content of the rows being modified. And you can actually perform some customization on the stream. So you can say, show me the before and show me the after. So looking at the before and after, you can do some very interesting diffs to see exactly which ch what changed on your data. So events are guaranteed to be in the same order that the modifications took place on your table. So when you're reading off the stream, the events are going to be in the exact same order. And finally, the most interesting part about streams is they unlock some very powerful use cases. So let's actually look into some of those use cases. So what kind of use cases? So in this case, we're going to be looking at an example that consists of real-time dashboards. So real-time dashboards are extremely common in the industry. You see them in a variety of applications, whether it's logistics, whether it's kind of um, keeping track of who's logged into a system. This is a very, very common application. So say in our example, we are a game developer, a video game developer. And we're a very successful video game developer, and we have a game events table. And we want to keep track of game events and players that are playing our game. So say we're storing our data like this. We have something like a game round ID, uh, we have a date, we have a player ID, and we have a score. So this corresponds to one game event, one round that took place in this game. Now, since this is a very popular game, you're going to have a lot of insert happening on this table at any given point in time. You, see, you have a lot of players in this example. So say one day someone comes along and says, hey, we want to introduce the concept of leaderboards here. We want to know at any given point in time who are the top 10 players uh, with the highest score or highest cumulative score at any point in time. And you want to model this data like this. You want to have a player ID. You want to have a number of games played. And you want a total cumulative sum of their score across all the game events that have occurred. So let's think about this. Let's go through our thought exercise and see how we would do this if we just had a normal you know, DynamoDB table or a normal RDS instance. So a naive approach is probably something like register a timer on the hour. And on every hour, you wake up and you have some kind of script that will scan the entire contents of your table and you know grab all the data, group all the data by the player ID, sum up the score for each player, and then insert it into this table, right? And this is like a very reasonable thing, a reasonable first attempt here. Um, now, I encourage you to think about, like, what are the implications of a strategy like that? That means, A, your data is never going to be real time because you're doing it on a, on a cadence. And cadence, by definition, is not real time. And second, what are, what's the monetary cost? So, so there's money that you have to spend here, right? If you're scanning an entire DynamoDB table, that's read throughput that you're wasting, right? And that's money that you're just basically burning. So this is definitely a big concern here, right? So this is not really a scalable solution. And if you think about scale a little bit more, so this scales linearly, right? So there's going to be new players. There's going to be more and more game events. That means your scans are going to get larger. They're going to have to read over much higher amount of data over time. And secondly, they're going to get slower too. So the more data you have to read, obviously, the longer it's going to take to process it. So this, this doesn't seem like a very reasonable approach after thinking about it a little bit more, right? So how do DynamoDB streams here uh, help? How do they help you? So 
what you can do with DynamoDB streams is that you can read off of all of the change events that are occurring on this table in real time. So every time an insertion happens, right, you can get an event that gets emitted from that. And so what you can do is hook up a Lambda to your DynamoDB stream. So every time an event occurs, you have a Lambda that gets invoked. And the Lambda's arguments are the contents of the change that occurred. Right? So if a person plays, plays a new game, that's going to be an insert event. And you are going to get the contents of this record as the argument for this Lambda function. Right? So say we want to replicate this data somewhere because we want to have very quick access to our leaderboards table. Now, we may want to replicate it in DynamoDB, but since in the end we want to select by top or select the top five, DynamoDB isn't really great at doing that, so you probably want to use a different data store. And in this case, I'm using Elasticsearch. You can use something like RDS or something like MySQL. It doesn't really matter here, right? As long as it kind of supports natively range and top sorting type queries, right? So again, every time that uh, invocation happens on the table, so an insert on the table, you're going to invoke this Lambda function, and then you are going to perform the corresponding operation in your leaderboards table. So let's get a little bit more into how this will work. So you, you're reading off your table here, there's an event that occurs, and that triggers a batch operation on your Lambda. So as the input to your Lambda, you get a batch of changes that occurred. So in order to go from, from this to this, from, from this guy to this guy, what do we have to do, right? So all we have to do is for each change, for every insertion, check this database for the player ID, and player ID could be your primary key, increment the number of games played, and increment the total score based on the content that's in the insert event, right? So all you have to do is increment at this point. So there's no more reading off this table in some kind of event like cron job kind of thing. And now you have a fully up to date real time data store consisting of your player scores, right? And then you can introduce some kind of, you know, web server or something on this end that's hooked up to a browser and, you know, your users can access this web server's API and you can do select top three. And this is going to be a much, much faster and more efficient operation. This table is going to be tiny, right? It's only the size is only going to be the number of players that you have. And that's relative to over here where your game events table is probably going to be pretty large if you have a, a large number of players playing a large number of games, right? So this is one of the applications where it's useful, real-time dashboards, very, very common. And the second one that I see a lot is data replication. So in this example, we were doing data replication, right? We were going from DynamoDB and then we had a Lambda in the middle and then we had an Elasticsearch cluster at the end. And then someone's reading off this Elasticsearch cluster. So say one day you decide you wanna make this data a little bit more searchable, right? You wanna add some more criteria on these leaderboards entries. So you can do things like, you know, search by country and search by date and search by certain combinations of criteria, like number of games played greater than N or something like that, right? In those kinds of queries, DynamoDB doesn't really support that very well, right? So it's very good for quick insertions, quick removals, quick fetches. However, it's not very good for criteria-based searches. Now, sure, it's possible, like you can do it, but it's going to cost you a lot of read capacity. It's not really optimized for this sort of thing. And that, in comparison to something like an Elasticsearch instance, where it natively supports these kinds of fuzzy searches, right? So you can, so you can query by all sorts of kind of conditional criterias. Right. So this is an example where you may want to maintain your primary data store for quick insertions. So this is kind of be, going to be your source of truth for your game events and then have a data replication that not only is doing some processing in the middle, but it's also surfacing searchable data in a database that natively supports it. And say someone like your BI team, your, your business intelligence, or maybe even like from a, from a web server, like your customer level can actually access this database directly. And this would kind of decouple your core database over here. And now you kind of are using this as a secondary. So this is one of the examples where data replication is, is pretty practical. And it's something that I've personally done in real life. And I gotta tell you, it works super, super well with Lambdas. So a little bit about features now. 
So like I said before, there's guaranteed in order events, and I discussed why that's important a little bit earlier. And the events that are emitted are customizable. So there's a couple types. So there's keys only. So anytime a modification happens on your table, you only get the key that changed. There's new image, which means that when there's a modification, you only see what the new version of the record looks like. You don't see what the reference object was, what the original object looked like. And the next one is old image. So similar to new image, you only see the reference object. You only see the original. And then the last one is new and old. So this is more useful, obviously, because you can see what it was before, what it is now, and then do a diff and figure out what changed. And maybe that's important to you for your application, right? Depending on what your application is and what it does, you can pick which type of event works best for you. So it supports batch processing. So in Lambda functions, if you were to hook this up to a Lambda function, you can get one invocation per dozen, per 50, per 100 events. That's up to you to customize. Um, and this is a really neat feature. So there's absolutely zero performance impact on the source table. So your DynamoDB original table isn't going to be touched. It's not going to get slower because of this. And it's not going to cost anything extra on the DynamoDB level. DynamoDB streams are completely independent of the DynamoDB table that it's attached to. And the part that I kind of like the best is that it's super, super easy to integrate this thing with AWS Lambda functions. And in a future video, I'm going to actually show you how to do that, how to set all this up from start to finish. So I want to talk about quickly like how it works under the hood, because I think it's kind of interesting. So you have this concept of a stream, and I kind of think of it as like a tube, and things are coming through the tube, right? You have events that are occurring, and they're passing through the stream. So streams consist of a number of shards, right? And it, can be, and it can be any number of shards. You as a user have no control over this. It's completely independently managed by DynamoDB, right? And shards are kind of like vehicles or containers. They're containers for record events, change events that occur on your table, right? So we can think of each of these red circles here as change events. And when a change event is inserted or, or created in response to something happening on your table, these get added to a shard and they get associated with a sequence number and they get associated with an integer that corresponds to the sequence in which the records were inserted into your stream. In this case, I have three data record events and they are sequenced one, two, and three. So when you hook it up to a Lambda, how it works is that Lambda will utilize some of its concurrency to pull your shards for data. They'll constantly be asking, hey, shard, do you have any more data? Is there anything in this vehicle? Do you have anything I, I should process? And they'll pull at a rate of four times per second per shard, right? This is, this is how it works. And if they find information, if they find something in one of the shards, they'll take that data and pass it into your real Lambda function. And it w the arguments of your Lambda function will be the data records, the data records that were inserted into the shard and that, are, that have been grabbed by your pollers, right? So with that in mind, there's some caveats here. So if you're using Lambda functions, say you are, you're processing a batch events and you throw an exception, right? Oops, my bad, something bad happened here. So the way DynamoDB streams work with Lambda functions is that everything is sequenced. So if you throw an exception, Lambda will keep on trying to process that same batch over and over and over again. And if there's some kind of critical bug in your code where it just can't get past that exception, your processing will get stuck. It'll be abruptly halted. The only way to fix this is to replace your Lambda function with code that can kind of account for that exception and not rethrow that exception back all the way up the stack. So how do you fix this? Well, you fix this by always having a top level try catch on your Lambda function that's processing a DynamoDB stream. And if something fails, you can't process it, something bad happens, don't just throw the exception all the way to the top or else this infinite loop of retry is gonna happen. Put that message to a dead letter queue, alarm on that dead letter queue and come back and fix it. And you can redrive those events from the dead letter queue back into your Lambda. So that's one of the caveats that I wanted to talk about. So that about wraps things up. Uh, thanks so much for watching. And if you have any topics you'd like me to cover, 
please feel free to drop me a message below in the comments section. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks so much, guys, and I'll see you next time.